Okay. Faithful translator here. <laughs> All right. So this morning, we're going to be looking at an Old Testament passage. It's from the book of Hosea. We're actually going to be in chapter six. This is probably not a common chapter to focus on. Okay. I'm going to read it, and you can read it on the screen in Chinese. I'm going to read it in English. Yeah, let's read uh, Chinese. Uh, just watch on the, on the okay. screen the Chinese. <laughs> Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He's injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he'll revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like winter rains, like spring rains that water the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. Therefore, I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. The, then my judgments go forth like the sun. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, an acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. How many, I'm just curious, how many are familiar with this passage? Okay, well, okay. <laughs> well, after today, you should be really well acquainted with this. <laughs> okay. To me, these six verses are backwards. At least chronologically. I think verse four through ship six should come first and then one through three. And we're gonna actually do just a little bit of a, a, a review for the first three chapters, which is kind of the heart of the whole book. And then I'll show you what I mean by what I just said about these being reversed. So Hosea was a prophet who was called by God, and he lived in Israel, this northern kingdom. At this time, Israel had two kingdoms, the southern and then the northern. He was in the north. So this was, this was roughly 750 years before the time of Jesus. So God tells so not only is he the spokesman, he has to live the way God wants him to live. And God tells him to marry an adulterous woman, a woman who will not be faithful to him. In, in their marriage, she has three kids. Uh, that he's raising, but none of them are his. She leaves him for other men uh, in hopes that she can get a better life for herself. But 
but her life somehow turns out differently than she had planned. Somehow she is, she's destitute, she's lost everything, and she's probably, she probably ended up on an auction block, like someone's selling her. And at this point, God tells Hosea to go and buy her back. Now, this whole story that he has to live out is this visual sign to all of Israel that they are this woman. They are not faithful to the Lord. Hosea is telling them that their lives will not turn out as they have planned. But when everything falls apart, and just as Hosea was asked to go and be reunited with his wife that left him, Hosea is saying, God is the same. God, things are going to turn out like, unlike what you think, but God will still be there. He will still love you. Now, Hosea is calling the people of Israel, and, and through this story and also his words, he's speaking messages to them, uh, telling them, put your trust in God Almighty and turn to him, call on him. Sorry, going the wrong way here. That's right. Now, the only way, this is a bold statement here, but this is it. The only way anyone can truly be prosperous, successful in this life is to serve God with all your heart. Now, I know some of you are thinking, like, that's good. <laughs> the, the, mind, the wheels are turning and thinking, well, I know a lot of very successful, you know, very, uh, very profitable people uh, who do not serve God at all. And I think my, my, my point here is that truly, that everlasting success, that, that you fulfill your calling, you fulfill your me the meaning that God has put you here on earth for. And everything else will not last. So, Second current, uh, Second Chronicles 31, 21 is on the screen here. It says, and in every word that he is talking about King Hezekiah here, began uh, in the service of the house of God, in the law, and in the commandments, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. So he prospered. Uh, now, King Hezekiah, he, he lived at this time that Hosea is prophesying. And um, at this time, the people are serving the Baals, they're serving all kinds of idols. 
His parents had rejected God and encouraged the country to worship uh, other gods. But Hezekiah sought to know and please the Lord in all that he did, and he prospered. Now, now, we're going to contrast that with this other guy, Rehoboam. He was King Solomon's son. And, uh, and <clears throat> he did not know God or seek to please him. And there we go. Second Chronicles 12, 14 says he did evil because he had not set his heart on seeking the Lord. Now, we're going to talk about the Lord. Now, we're going to talk about the Lord. Now, we're going to 就是罗伯安,这里写的罗伯安王,王虽然是罗伯安的儿子,那继承了罗伯安的王位,那这个人他并不亲近神,并不寻求神,那结果,就像这里经文上提到的,那 because of Ray of Boam's poor choices, not following the Lord, Israel was actually split in two, and that's why we have a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, because of his choice. It's coming. <laughs> it came and it went, right? Oh, no, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Verse 5 that we had already read says, Therefore I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I, I kill you with the words of my mouth. Uh, then my judgments go forth like the sun. Trying to stop God's judgments is like trying to stop the sun. It's impossible. It doesn't matter if you believe what God says or not. It's still going to happen. 所以这段经文在荷西亚书大家可以看到写的非常的警告非常的严厉他的审判像光一样所以也提醒我们不管我们怎么样想要做什么事情但是不寻求神若神的惩罚就像太阳一样你没办法阻拦了那 God is warning Israel what will happen and telling them how to avoid it 那要神借著何西亞要提醒民眾怎麼樣能夠避免神的懲罰。Now the problem they had is the same problem we have today. 當時的民眾他們遇到的問題也是我們今天遇到的。The problem is that we don't really believe it because we can't understand it. 那問題是什麼呢?就是我們不信,很大的原因就是我們並不了解。now, uh, just a little bit of background into the, or the, a little bit of history of this time, okay? Um, Israel had, since the time of Solomon, had really been going downhill. So, we're going to look at the history of why it's going to be like that. Now, from Solomon, the whole country, the Israel country, was going to be Probably like 100, 150 years of steady downhill. About 100 years, 150 years of time, it's going to be going to be but through a series of events of weak kings in other countries and a strong king in Israel, Jeroboam II, um, things changed for Israel. So, so one historian says this, he says, in less than 25 years, Jeroboam II, this is the king of, the, of Israel here, was able to take a nation that was just about ready to die and turn it into one of the great powers of his day. So this king, we call it Yeroboam, this king, in this king, in this very short time, about 
那把一个几乎走下坡路、走到底、很破碎的国家，变成兴盛起来。They were experiencing experiencing this incredible prosperity, this political strength. They were regaining lands that they had lost. It was crazy. 那这个时候不单单是国家富强，同时这个国家在政治上，也就是说周围的邻国的关系里面，他们也很强大。所以别人都都来称呼他们。And, and the same thing was happening in the southern kingdom of Israel. 那类似的情况，这个我们刚讲的是北国的以色列，类似的情况在南国的犹大国也是的。So at this time, Hosea comes along, and he's giving this message that things are going to change. 所以就在这样一个南北国都很富强的情情况下，何西亚来传这个信息说。And, and hopefully you can you can understand what I'm saying. We don't often believe it because we can't see when when someone says, "Oh, something bad's going to happen to you," and you think, "Wow, everything I've been doing has been creating this great amount of success. We're stronger than we were before because we're doing the right thing." So, so just the list of things. We, many people, not. 我们跟当时的以色列人不顺从神，一个很大原因就不了解我们，因为目前能看到的，我们看不远。目前能看到我们很富、很很富强，所以我们就把我们所做的事情，原来做过的事情，是跟这个结果连在一起，因为很富强。So this is why I say the、um, Hosea chapter six, verse one through six, four through six should be first, because at this point where Hosea is preaching, everything's going great. And God is just warning them. He's He's giving them, saying what's going to come. But if you read the, again, verse one through three, you see, you see that punishment. You you see judgment coming to Israel, and then you see restoration in one and three. Sorry. So he says, "This is the first verse, six through six. Four through six should first read because here is warning them that the days are not going to be good for them." 但是你如果一开始读一到三节，都觉得哎，惩罚这么的残忍。Now, pretty much nobody at this time could have believed that in 722 BC, this could be anywhere from 30 to 50 years after Hosea's preaching, that it would be gone. Assyria would come in, completely destroy, and take over the land. Send. People they don't kill, they send them out. They bring new people in. Everything changes like in an instant. The whole country is different. So in this background, it's not too long. It's about 30 years. So if you look at the history of the Middle East, it's the Yasser country that grew up and took the whole of the Middle East and the whole of the Middle East. It's in this background that Hosea is warning them. Now, Hosea comes and says, "It's all going to be destroyed in an instant, and and you know what's happening in your country. You know how strong it is. How popular do you think Hosea's message was to the people?" So, in this historical background, the whole country is very strong. The people are very happy. And in other countries, the relationship between the two countries is very strong. In this situation, you can see that Hosea is warning the people that will listen. How popular would it be today if there was a Hosea out there preaching to us that because we have do not follow God completely, He has plans for us to pretty much bring us down to destroy our country. 就像我们现在在这个国家，那如果有何西亚来告诉我们说，因为我们不顺从神，那将来我们日子都不好过，会毁我们整个国家会被毁灭。If you think about it like that, then you can understand how difficult it was for them because it's very hard. So if you think about it like that, then you can understand how difficult it was for them because it's very hard. To be honest, if I hear someone talk like that, I think they're an extremist. Okay, they're they're kind of out there. They're kind of crazy. Now, just like he said, if I'm in that situation, and if I hear such a message, he would think this is crazy. He would think it's crazy. Israel had a problem. They not only did not know God, they didn't trust God, but they relied on their own, their own thinking. So Israel's main problem is also the same as our problem. 
就是他并不完全的信靠神，都是信靠我们自己脑袋里想的东西。Their life choices appeared to be good ones because everything in their society was going well. Yeah. You know, Prosperous, you know, strong military, regaining lands. 生活也很富裕，国家也很军军军队方面也很强大，又占领了很多新的土地。在这个环境下，我们都做的很对，那导致了这样一个结果，这是他们的想法。Now, do you ever trust, you know, your life choices, uh, or or credit your life choices, the the, the choices that you make to your financial success or your uh Enjoyment of life, or even the control of your future. Say, I did this. So, here's a story. Very good. Listen. That the cause of the change is that we think about ourselves. If you're more free financially, 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 if you're more free I feel like this is just the natural. I I do this, I get this, I did it. Uh, Israel had the same thing. They 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 felt like they were in control and they were doing everything right. Uh, they made the right alliances with other countries. Uh, you know their their military was good. They they had more wealth than they had had in probably 150 years. So this is a natural, a very natural, a very natural feeling. I did the right thing, so I got this reward. Ah, Israel at that time was the same. My family was strong, the military was strong. Then, maybe for 100 years, they were not so strong. 所以他就知道他们所做的什么事情是做对了，才有这个结果。Now they were worshiping God. They, the temple was there、uh, in the south, but they were also burning incense to God in the north. 啊，所以他们实际上还是敬拜耶和华神的。他们仍然到南部的耶路撒冷去敬拜呃庙呃那个圣殿里面去敬拜神。但他同时又有很多其他的。But they were also worshiping all the other gods of all the lands. 还有很多其他其他的各个地方的各种各样的偶像。I want you to remember when we talked about Hezekiah and Rehoboam, true and lasting success only comes by knowing and pleasing the Lord. 所以，他刚刚前面讲了两个王的对比，所以就提醒大家。最终的、长远的，你的、你的成功，是因为你要接近神。The the people of Israel were so far away from God, they didn't they didn't know Him, but they didn't even know how far they had drifted away from Him. 那以色列民也是一样，他们实际上远离了神，但是他们并不知道远离了多远。Now God had continually sent messenger after messenger, all these prophets. If you, if you open your Bible, it's like huge section. Um, pretty much the end of the Old Testament is pretty much all prophets, and they're all giving similar messages. Now, when they were far away from God, in the Old Testament, you can see in the Old Testament, God sent messengers to tell them, warn them, for a long time, a long time period of time. Now, in this atmosphere, Now, in this atmosphere, Hosea is clearly telling the people of Judah to either return to the Lord. Or face his destruction. So, in this story, Hosea is warning the people of Judah, either you return to God, or you will be destroyed. Now, the people of Judah were very angry with God. They were very angry with God. Again, God, God wants His people to turn from their their ways, trusting all these other gods. He wants them to turn, and 
In Jeremiah, here in Jeremiah 26, he says, well, this is what the Lord says, 7 verse 2, stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people in the towns of Judah and come uh, who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. Perhaps they will listen and each will turn from his evil ways. Then I will relent and not inflict on them the disaster I was planning because of the evil they have done. Now, that's obviously the southern kingdom, but it's the same message over and over again. Hundreds of years of messages. God wants his people back. So, <coughs> 那耶利米书引到了这段经文虽然是耶利米对南部的犹大国说的但是意思是一样的大家如果认真看这个经文表示了耶和华神的心意是希望这些民众回到他这里来所以一直的愿意他们回头而不是就是能够遭受到他已经
Hosea 6, 3 says, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. And then in verse 6, he says, I, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. This is a, this word acknowledge, like acknowledge the Lord, it, it doesn't just mean, yes, there's a God. Uh, it, it comes from the word, the Hebrew word, yada. Amen. Yada. Yada. Which is kind of funny. When I heard this, I thought, if you're familiar with in English expressing yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yeah, that's good analogy. <laughs> that just means, yeah, just whatever, you know, like someone speaking. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> So I don't think it has anything to do with the Hebrew word. But, but the Hebrew word here means it, it's not just acknowledge. It's like you get to know somebody. You get to know somebody like your spouse or a family person, a uh, family member, or your best friend. It's like uh, when you know what they like, you know what they don't like, you know what, what pleases them, you know, you know, it, you, you come to know them as maybe they're a protector, maybe they're a source of strength and joy and support to you. Uh, maybe you're just always happy when you're with them. But in that relationship, you come to depend on them and you want to be with them. So Paul says in Philippians 3, so Paul is talking about like, you know, he's this great leader, he's he's had this incredible career, super smart guy, uh, but in chapter 3, verse 8, there it is, he says, what is more? I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I've lost all things, I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. This is that word that, that the Israelites in the Old Testament have lost. They don't know God. They don't know him personally. They don't know him at the heart. They don't have that relationship. So he used Paul's Philippi, so that this verse, the next sentence, is what I know. This knowledge is what he was talking about. This knowledge is what he was talking about. In this knowledge process, in the real knowledge process, all the other things you will see are dark. You will know that you will be able to believe in Jesus Christ and be found in him. So, 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 I kind of wanted to be done now, but I'm going to probably be another five minutes again. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> because now I want to go into the first three verses, which talk about God's plan, okay? And God's plan is different. So at the end of Hosea, Hosea chapter 12 to 13, 12, 12 to 13, 11, right? So now we're going to talk about the first three verses, which talk about God's plan is different. Uh, so Hosea recounts some of the history of Israel. Now, Hosea, you're going to 
这个以色列的历史。And this history reveals that Israel has never been faithful, and it is never will be faithful. 在回顾历史的角度发现，我们整个历史上以色列人从来就没有真正的 And like all people, cannot be faithful. 从来就没真正的能够忠贞的而信靠耶和华神，就像我们这里现在的人一样，从来就没。He gives three examples. 他举了三个例子在以色列历史上。One is, is Jacob. Jacob leaves his country to find a wife, and on his way back, he starts wrestling with God. 那其中一个是雅各，大家知道，他他离开自己家，跑到别的地方去。那后来又回来，回来路上还要跟神呃摔跤。God. The second example is when they, they're、uh, the the Israelites are in Egypt, and he leads them to the Promised Land, gives them the Ten Commandments, and they build. Idols. They built the calves. Ah, the second example, you know, the Israelites in Egypt doing their work, they were rescued from the desert on the Red Sea. But, but they themselves built an idol. And the third is when they're in the Promised Land, God sets Himself up as as their God, their King, and they say, "We want a real King." Ah, the third story is when the Israelites finally reach the Promised Land. Ah. 耶和华神说：“我是你们的王。”但是老百姓说：“我们还要一个地上的王。” They they reject God as king. 所以他把耶和华神完全的放弃了，最后。So God comes up and says, "Their sin, their wicked hearts, their distance from Him is going to result in their destruction." 所以耶和华呃，他希望这里引用的经文说：“他们从来从来就没有顺服耶和华神，没有对我忠贞，所以他们最后的结果会受到惩罚。” But then God makes this claim, and oh, sorry, someone already did it for me. Here He says, "I will deliver this people from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Where, O、oh、death, are your plagues? Where, O、oh、grave, is your destruction?" So, 但是真正的神，耶和华神的心意在这里，他最终要拯救他们，要救他们脱离死亡。Now Israel couldn't save themselves. We can't save ourselves. Israel 民并不能拯救他们自己，我们也不能拯救我们自己。So God, in His great love, saved us. 只有耶和华神他的永恒的爱能够救我们。Now, in Hosea, Israel is clearly portrayed as the adulterous wife. But later, God calls Israel a virgin. 所以说，荷西亚这个书，呃，这个例子里边还有一个很有意思的事情。你看，我们知道荷西亚娶了一个淫荡的妇人，但是来代表以色列民，但是在圣经里面讲，以色列民是一个童女的形象。Yeah, Jeremiah thirty-one says, "I will build you up again, and you, virgin Israel, will be rebuilt." 那 virgin Israel， 童女以色列，在耶利米书这里记载。这个淫荡的妇人，这个时候把她叫做童女以色列，因为重建的人。It is impossible to be an adulteress and then somehow become a virgin. 所以我们当然都知道，呃，按常理，不可能成一个淫荡的妇人变成一个童女。But not with God. 但是在神。His plan was to send a savior. That savior is Jesus, who, uh, who would come. And we could know God personally. He is the image of God. Jesus would pay for all our sins by giving us His life for ours. Ah, God's one, God's one plan is to send Jesus to the earth, and then to rebuild us, and to make us whole again. Ah, using His blood to save us. Some people feel like the, the verse uh, uh, in uh, chapter, I mean, verse two. Hosea six two, when it says, "On the third day He will restore us,"、uh, they they think this is a prophecy about Jesus、uh, rising from the dead on the third day. Now, 有的人说，以西结的这个六呃六章二节这提到第三天，认为说意象就是耶稣基督的第三天的复活。And it, as it says, He will restore us to Himself. 所以他的彰显的意思就是他会重建我们，重新复活我们，在他里边能够复活。So we are like the Israelites、uh, who face destruction because 
So they face destruction because of their sin and ignorance. Uh, we have choices to make. 那这个故事就彰显我们，我们也像以色列民一样，他们不信靠神会被毁灭。我们也是一样，因为我们的罪性，因为我们不知。So okay. Hosea is telling the Israelites because he knows they're not listening to him. 那何西亚就是这样苦苦的来劝告以色列民，他他知道他们不会听的。So he's telling them in verse one, he's saying, after you have been destroyed. After the country's gone, after you have been crushed and all your dreams gone, that is when you need to return to the Lord. He is the only one who can restore you. And that brings right back to the beginning of 6 1, which says, Come, let us return to the Lord. So recap here. So I'm going to skip this, the last part here. We should never assume that any success in our life is the result of our good choices. I'm not talking about following Jesus. I'm talking about like, I'm doing this. And if I have to, whatever I choose is the right way. Now, the, the only way we can have true and lasting success is to know and please the Lord God. And he has changed everything by making a way for us to be with him forever through the blood of Jesus. And concerning this passage that's on the, on the board up here from Ezekiel, there is a time coming. When we will never doubt him or backslide from serving him. I know that's not now, but there is a time coming. There is a time coming when we will never serve anyone or any other thing but him. I want to say, what a great future for those who love him. Amen.